Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on this Tuesday, this Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. As you know, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes uh, before we get to the context of our broadcast, uh, give people a chance to tune in. And I've got to tell you, uh, by the numbers of people viewing not only when we're on the air live, but because you are sharing uh, the um, watch parties that we have uh, with regard to this broadcast, because we do uh, put it on Facebook after the broadcast, sometime between 7.30 and 8.30, and because of the number of people now viewing via Facebook and other social media outlets, the numbers are growing. And the, another uh, metric we're using uh, to measure the impact of this broadcast, to measure the impact of the information that we're sharing, are the emails and the messages that we're receiving. And boy, we're getting a lot of them, because this country is in trouble. It's in very serious trouble. And I will share with you exactly why I am saying that tonight at this hour. And it's something you need to know. And it's something that I hope wakes up a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we've got to get there, folks. We've got to turn things around in this country. And we've got to take on the Democrat socialist. And I mean, we really have to take them on. So as we move forward... Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of things going on that we do not like. I'll certainly be saying a lot of things that a lot of people don't like, but that's too bad. That's their problem, not my problem. We have to be uh, truthful. We have to be transparent. And you know what else we have to do, folks? We have to back the President of the United States. The guy's taking hits from every single end you could imagine. You know, I was on the air the past 72 hours, and by the way, uh, tonight, I will be, I, uh, actually tomorrow morning, not tonight, at 4 a.m., and I know many of you will be tucked in sleeping. I'll be, in a, I'll be uh, uh, on uh, Fox and Friends first at 4 a.m., and then somewhere during the day, we're going to do another hit on Fox, and then I believe we'll be back on Shannon Bream tomorrow night. Now, between all of that, we do have a couple of um, videos that we will be posting of some of our broadcasts, because these late hours... Uh, they're really late. Now, we started on Shannon Bream's uh, last night uh, about 11 o'clock, and we didn't get finished till uh, 2 a.m., uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. So, and, and like I said, people have been asking, well, man, why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, and it's not only me, ladies and gentlemen. There's a group of us out there who are investing a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort, and frankly, uh, uh, it's something that has to be done. It, it has to be done. Uh, and you're doing your part. I know you are. I know many of you are doing some great things for this country, and you're praying, and you're, you're raising your kids the right way, and you're, you're doing all sorts of uh, things to help uh, get this country back to both a, a spiritual level, when we are worshiping God, when we don't have to worry about using the word God and country in the same sentence, and you're also moving your children along to do what? To believe in that flag that is behind me. All glory to learn about what this country is all about and why they should fight, fight, and fight and never, ever sur surrender their constitutional rights and their liberty. Okay, folks, let's get started. Uh, it's been a rough night. It's been a rough, uh, rough couple of weeks. Well, I've gotten many, many calls from both the uh, medias, uh, the TV media, the electronic media, social media, and as well as the print media. Some newspaper editors did call me today, and they asked me what I thought about President Trump's statement that it may be time to use military forces, troops, to come into our cities and to clean up what has taken place. So here's one of the headlines. President Trump vowed Sunday night that, if necessary, he would use the United States military to assist in controlling the looting and violent protests taking place throughout the country which has raised questions on what degree the armed forces can legally get involved with domestic law enforcement. Now, some of the reporters that talked to me today said that they are getting information from whoever their sources are that the president is going to use the military to remove the protesters, and that is a violation of the Constitution of the United States, the right to assemble. I told those reporters, well, you're right and you're wrong. The protesters have the right to assemble. But the rioters don't have the right to burn buildings, to assault cops, to throw firebombs in police cars, and to create havoc wherever they go. 
The rioters are leaving a trail of destruction that no one seems to be concerned about. And I also ask these reporters that the one thing that I've seen on TV that's truly troubling is that MSNBC, and I did call them out, and CNN, every single night, every single hour, maybe every single minute, they're interviewing rioters, not even protesters. I've said all along, I believe that the people who are protesting have a legitimate reason to protest, and that's fine. This is what our country is all about, the right to assemble. So why is the press not interviewing protesters? And if they do, folks, it's for a quick 10 seconds. So they're out there in the streets of New York and the other cities, you know, following the rioters uh, 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 whose uh, faces are covered, who have knapsacks that are obviously filled, and you can make sure that they don't have Carvel ice cream in those knapsacks. And they're interviewing them. But you know what the common thread that I've noticed is? Not one cop on the line has been interviewed. Not one cop these reporters have sought out to speak to. Now, a reporter said to me today, well, you know, maybe they can't. Maybe they're not allowed to. I could guarantee that if those reporters went to a police chief of any precinct in New York or went to uh, uh, any town, city across this country and asked if they could talk to police officers, the chief would find a cop who's articulate and who's got it together and who will talk to those reporters. Which leads me to this point. All we're getting is the side, if you want to call it a side, of the bad actors. The family of George Floyd has consistently said, stop the violence. Stop the violence. African-American women I saw on TV who owned small businesses were begging for the, the rioters to stop. They destroyed this woman's dreams. They destroyed her future. They took her life away from her. And all these reporters do is just beat the drum over how terrible things are, how bad things are in this country. Then get out of the country. Then get the heck out of my country. Because I'm sick and I'm tired of hearing this drumbeat. We have problems, folks, in this country, no doubt. There is racism, no doubt. But 99% of our police officers, our law enforcement officers, across this country, from east to west and north to south, are not racist. They're good men and women who have wives, husbands, children, who go to work every day hoping to God they come back home to their families. Cops are being shot at. Several were killed yesterday, run down by cars. Firebombs being thrown into police cars. And what do we hear? The same old drum beat from Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon and that entire crew over there at CNN. How bad things are for the people. There's not one cop who I've talked to, not one person with a heart who I've talked to, not one who is opposed to the legal, lawful, peaceful protest. And you want to know why they're not opposed to it? Because they support their cause. They support their cause of getting things straightened out, in, whether it be police departments or governments across this country, so that another young man like George Floyd does not become the victim of a real racist, of a killer. The guy doesn't belong and should have never had the badge. He tarnished it, he tarnished the badge, and he stained my profession. And those others that were with him and did nothing and hung around... They all deserve prison. Believe me, they all do. But the fact of the matter is, is that that is what we are not talking about anymore. I believe that the messages of the protesters has been heard loud and clear. But the message of the rioters has overdrowned. The anarchists have drowned out the message that the Floyd family and that the good cops are trying to get across to the American people. And there's another message that needs to be said. And that message is the cowardly, utter failure of the Democrat Socialist leadership in this country. Minneapolis, that Democrat mayor and that governor, they embolden what the people committing these unlawful acts. They embolden these criminals, these terrorists to do what they are doing across this country. 
And the proof is that they emboldened them on the night that the police were told to stand down, and not only stand down, but to run, to leave police headquarters, the third precinct. And then those rioters, those criminals, those thugs, those terrorists came into that neighborhood and building by building by building, they burned. And then they burned a symbol of those who are called to protect and serve, a symbol of those who are called to protect our liberty and freedom. They burned it to the ground. And it didn't end there. Because that was the flame that ignited the horrors that we're seeing across this country today. Not one police officer in Minneapolis or across this country who stood down and did not take action should be blamed. Those cops wanted to take action. They wanted to stand. They took an oath of office and wanted to uphold it. But it is their superior officers, the civilian officers, not the uniform ones, the civilian officers who did what? Who ordered them to stand down. The cowardly mayor, the cowardly governor. And you know I don't use names like that on the air. I don't like to call people out like that. But there is no other definition I have, no other word I could describe when you have cowards in command. Why wasn't there a tactical plan, a strategic plan? Why wasn't a command post set up to fight back these terrorists? One day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, and people are still destroying property across this country. Now you go from Minneapolis and you run over to New York City, Folks, I was stunned last night. I'm on the air. I am on national television. And a report comes in that there is, again, the buildings are burning in the streets of New York. The rioting. The assaults on police officers. The firebombing. But what really got me was during this report, another report came in. It was a tweet by Mayor Bill de Blasio letting the world know, look, I am in command here. I am touring the city of New York, and it looks like things have calmed down. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. It looks like things have calmed down. Where in the world was he driving around? Where on earth was he driving around? And so what have we had, folks? We've had landmarks destroyed in Washington, D.C., Landmarks, folks. Landmarks were destroyed in Washington, D.C. The Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Memorial, Lafayette Park, the Jefferson Memorial, the Supreme Court, the Capitol Building, war memorials. A lot of these people are 17, 18, 19 years old, and I just got off the phone with a friend of mine in Florida. And we were talking about what's going on with young people in our country today. A few days from now, if anybody really cares anymore, June 6th, the end of the war in Europe. The end of a war where my father and your father, I'm sure, and your mothers and your relatives at the age of 15 and 16 ran to the recruiters, ran to them. My father lied about his age and said he was 17 so that he could get in the United States Army and fight for his country. When they found out he was 16, they threw him out. You know what he did? He ran to the Navy, and he got away with it, and he fought in World War II. At the age of 17, 18, and 19 years old, our young children in this country were in B-17 bombers getting shot down over Germany. They were on the beaches of Omaha. Iwo Jima. You think those people, we've all seen the Marines holding that flag up at Iwo Jima. They were 17, 18, 19 year old kids. Well, these punks are out there and that's what they are, thugs and punks. And like I said, I'm not talking about the protesters. I think young kids who are out protesting legally and lawfully, 
they should be commended because they're out there doing it the right way. They're out there doing it within the framework of the law. And that's a good thing. They get involved in a lawful process. But I'm talking about the punks and the thugs and the criminals at the age of 17, 18, and 19, destroying people's livelihoods. When I hear CNN and MSNBC and these mainstream media people interviewing these young kids, a, a 17 or 18-year-old today was talking about how oppressed she is. Oh, how oppressed. Oppressed. You want to know what oppression is? Talk to a 17 or 18-year-old kid in Venezuela. Or how about one who escaped the Soviet hammer and sickle? How about that? I'll tell you what. Maybe we'll give you a ticket to China. Live under the regime. Live under the Communist Chinese Party. That's oppression. Oppression. Young people today have more opportunities than ever I had and ever our parents had. But you've got those opportunities because somebody died for those opportunities. And I think the young people of this country who are marching legally and lawfully, they are paying tribute and a service to the veterans who died in World War II and beyond. Yes, a service because they are exercising their rights to assemble within the framework of the law, within the constitutional law of the United States. I think that would drill, uh, uh, thrill the heart of any veteran knowing that maybe we can disagree on issues and we can disagree on policies, but we can't disagree on the right to assemble. So there is a contrast. There is a contrast between the young people who are lawfully protesting a righteous cause, if you will, and those who are unlawfully wreaking destruction across this country. A chilling thought, folks. A chilling thought for you to go home if you're not at home and watching this somewhere else. But certainly a chilling thought for you before you go to sleep tonight. When you go to bed tonight and we end up with a war with China, Russia, or we end up in a war, I mean, I'm talking about a big war equal to that of World War II. Will these young people stand up and fight? Think about that one. In my lifetime, I would have never, ever dreamed that I would be asking that question today in my country. Will they in mass stand up and fight? I have been criticized a lot over some of the policies that I have supported and suggested over the years, and I'm going to share one with you that, 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 that will probably light up some people. And it involves the military. I am certainly an individual who would like to see the draft come back in this country. Why? Because you draft people into the military, they get discipline, they get order, they learn how to live in a structure where you will be able to build character and learn about teamwork and you'll learn about love of God and country. Now, of course, when I first said that, oh my God, the guy wants my kids to go to war. You're darn right if our country's under attack, if our country is being overrun by a vicious enemy, if, we're, if the, 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 they're bombing the living daylights out of us, somebody's got to fight. I served my life in the United States military. My son served in the United States Marines. At the age of 18, 19, he fought in Fallujah in Iraq. So I think I have a little bit of say on this issue. So, what do you think, folks? I'd love to hear from you. Please comment on Facebook, send me emails. I really want to hear from the American people with regards to how about reinstituting the draft. Because if we instituted the draft, I, I, I bet you 80% of those young people now causing havoc and destruction across this country wouldn't be doing that. Because maybe some of them would wake up. Maybe the rest of them would wake up so much and open their eyes and run away from the country. Good, go. Because if you're not willing to stand up as you are willing to fight 
against the police and against our laws, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm not willing to give you the right to enjoy any of the freedoms that I fought for. So I'll wait. I'll wait for the critics. I'll wait for those who are now going to start condemning. Well, I wear what I say as a badge of honor. Which leads me to this. And I tweeted this out earlier. And I put it on Facebook earlier. And I'm going to read it to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to read it to you. Because I already got a lot of feedback, pro and con. So if you, didn't, if you did not see this on Facebook... I'm going to read it to you. Several police officers shot, run down by cars, killed and seriously injured. And what do we hear from the Democrat socialist leaders? What do we hear, folks? What drum is being beaten in the halls of Congress? We need commissions and committees to launch investigations on who? On the police. That is the response we're getting from the Democrat socialist political leaders. I'm being criticized. My colleagues are being criticized. And President Trump is being criticized. For what? We are getting the heat over the fact that we support the president's suggestion to use the United States military to address the problems we're facing today. And frankly, folks, I don't care. They could criticize me all they want. I really mean it. I don't care. So one might say, well, if you don't care, why are you bringing it up? Because here's the part I care about. Here's the part I care about. The part that nobody wants to talk about. The part that no Republican in leadership wants to talk about. But as I call out Democrat socialists, it's time to call out people in our own party. So here's the part, folks. Here's the part. Get ready. The blood pressure is going to rise where the party politics is. But as I hear the voices of the Dem Socialist, I am wondering, where are the voices of the Republican leadership across this country and in our state on every level of government? Where are the Republican conservative mayors? Where are the state senators? Where are the state assemblymen? Where are the governors? Where are our congressional representatives who every election, and I'm still getting these stupid These idiotic invitations when people are dying and they're losing their jobs. I'm still getting it in the mail from campaigns. Send me $1,000 and I'll represent you. Doesn't anybody have any common sense anymore? Maybe now is not the time to send those things out and make promises that you can't keep. Well, what do you mean? How can you judge I can't keep the promise? Because you haven't kept your promise to protect our people in our country, in our cities, and even in our neighborhoods. You haven't kept your promise. And we got a president of the United States who made that promise and is doing everything he could to keep that promise. But where are you? Where are you? So I go on to say, folks, that as far as I'm concerned, the amount of support that these Republican leaders give the President of the United States is the amount of support these Republican leaders will receive from we, the people, in November. So now, I got a lot of friends that are no longer my friends in the Republican Party. Too bad. Because we need leaders who are going to stand up Tell it like it is, not worry about their politics, not worry about their political agenda, their personal political agenda, but with strength and with vigor and with conviction and with passion, you need to stand up for what this symbol, what this symbol represents. Because the guy and gal on the street can't do it. Because when they did it in New Jersey, they were fined and they were locked up. When they did it in New York, they were fined and they were locked up. When they did it in California, Ohio, Florida, Nebraska, when they did it all over the country, they were fined and locked up, and you said nothing. You said nothing. And today in the state of New Jersey, we've got a governor running around endorsing and encouraging the protest 
endorsing and encouraging people to come and, and, and demonstrate, demonstrate their position on these issues. Fine, Governor. Fine. You know what? I'm not a hypocrite. I am not a hypocrite because if I say, let those who have protested against your policies protest, I should agree with you. And you know what, Governor Murphy? I agree with you that they should have the right to protest. But why is it that they have the right to protest and people lawfully exercising their constitutional rights to protest a few weeks ago, exercising their constitutional rights to go worship, exercising their constitutional right to go to a park, exercising their constitutional right to sit on a bench and to open their business and to see their neighbors and to visit their relatives were threatened and bullied by you. Why is it that you deploy drones and police to threaten and bully New Jersey residents? Why in the world is it okay for protesters to protest whether it's legal or not, and it's not okay for American citizens in this state who are conservatives and who wanted to legally and lawfully protest against your policies. Why? Why, Governor? Tell me what's the difference. You can't, but I could. The difference is you don't like conservatives. You don't like people standing up for their rights. You have a total disrespect out of your own mouth for the Constitution of the United States of America and the Bill of Rights. And you believe that you are entitled to that position, Governor Murphy and Governor Newsom and the Governor of Michigan and a whole lot of the Democrat socialists across this country. You believe you are entitled, entitled to be where you are, entitled to sitting in the office that you are in. You're not entitled to anything. And I pray and hope to God Almighty, I pray and hope to God Almighty that the minorities across this country understand what I just said too because it affects them most. Because the Democrat Socialists, out of the mouth of Joe Biden, their leader on national television, actually believed that they are entitled to your vote and your support and you are going to be in lockstep with the Democrat Socialist Party because you wouldn't be where you are without their help. That's not me talking. That are, that's the words of the leadership of the Democrat Socialist Party. When Mickey Shirell of the Congressional District 11, my district, sends this out this morning. She sent this out, folks. She said that well, actually what she was doing is, is that she was crying, crying, folks. Not literally, but, you know, crying in her tweets and social media uh, posts about possible military invention against uh, the, the people. The people, she said. The people demonstrating. Uh, she used the word protesters. She actually said that she was in the United States military and took an oath to protect those people who are out there protesting and objects to the President of the United States using the military. Listen, this is a military person. So objects to the President of the United States using the military to prevent them from protesting. Representative Shirell, you lied to the people in your tweet. You lied to them. Because the President of the United States is not suggesting military personnel be used to stop the protesters the legal protesters. He is suggesting the use of military personnel to stop the carnage, the insurrection. There's the word, Representative Shirell, insurrection. Insurrection. He wants to invoke the Insurrection Act, which he can legally do. He can legally do to mobilize the U.S. military to stop these forces. So she said that she took an oath. Folks, the same oath I took the same oath I took when I became an officer in the United States Navy. So she says she took an oath to uphold the constitutional rights of protesters and those who go out there and do what they're doing. So here was my response. My response was, and it was to the press also, and I'm sure they're not going to, they're certainly not going to post this as they posted hers. Uh, my response was uh, to those, like you, Representative Shirell, 
who are crying about possible military intervention against these mobs, you need to have a reality check. In St. Louis, on Monday night, four police officers were shot during protest. And in other cities, police officers have been shot and attacked. Innocent people have been injured. And I go on to tell her that I took an oath. Like you, Representative Shirell, I took an oath. As a, as a military officer, a naval officer like you, I took an oath to protect and defend law-abiding citizens from looters, from rioters, and other criminals. Your assertion that police were using rubber bullets and that the President of the United States wants to abuse his power in bringing the military in is absurd. You took the same oath I did. You're saying that you took an oath to, to, to uphold the constitutional rights, and I'll agree on the part of allowing lawful people protest. But I do not believe on the part that you believe, basically, that the president has no right to put down the insurrection. So let's make it clear. If that's the oath you took, it's your business. But I took the oath to defend the people. And I became a police officer and served for 38 years, not to protect rioters, but to send them to prison. Not to protect looters, but to send them to prison. Not to protect those who are burning buildings down and destroying the livelihoods of thousands of people, but to send them to prison. I took an oath as a police officer to protect and to serve the people who obey the laws of this country. So that's where we're at, folks. I hadn't intended to go on and on and on, but it just rolled. I have so much here to talk about. A couple of things I will offer you at no charge. I'm not looking to get any money out of this stuff. But I have here, folks, I have here the number of times United States presidents invoked the Insurrection Act and ordered U.S. military troops into cities which the mainstream media is not talking about. Got it right here, folks. I'll send this to you. We'll email it to you in a, in a newsletter, okay? We'll see, email it to you. I, I always know that knowledge and education can give you a lot of power. It started back in the 1950s. So you need to have this information. So when we post this stuff, uh, I'll tell you, when we post the video, I'll make sure that my email's on there. And for those of you who have a pen or whatever, or you can roll the video back, ltrogers at ltrogers.us. L.T. Rogers at ltrogers.us. And for those of you who think the president uh, has no basis to suggest that Antifa or terrorists, or terrorists are involved in some of these demonstrations, how do you explain that? Here we go again, folks. I always bring you proof. Always bring you proof. How do we explain that federal prosecutors have arrested an, El an Illinois man that they say attended a George Floyd protest in Minneapolis and recorded himself handing out explosives and saying, we came to riot. Those poor protesters, those people, the, the, the Floyd family, they, they want to get a message, a genuine, passionate message across that we should listen to, and at the very least, respect them. But you got this thug who goes into the protest and bragging about how he brought explosives, saying we came here to riot. And still the mainstream media and the liberals and the Democrats and the socialists are telling us that the president is out of line suggesting that Antifa should not be designated a terrorist organization. Yep. That's it, folks. We ran out of time. I wish we had more time. But we'll continue this discussion tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. I'm asking you to look out for me on Fox News. Some of the... Uh, Interviews we're going to be posting very shortly. But please, do me a favor. Please share this broadcast. Share it. I'm hoping, I'm believing that some of the things I have said, and I am seeing some good positive feedback amongst the garbage and the filth and the dirt and the criticisms that I receive, which I don't mind. Send it. Go ahead, send it. Waste your time. But I need to hear from you folks. I really want to hear from you about the possibility of reinstituting a draft. And I'd like to hear from you about your position regarding sending the U.S. military into these places that are being burned. And here's why I want to hear from you. 
And when you email me, those emails go nowhere. I just want to be able to say to the press, you want to know how many people got in touch with me and support the president? Here's the stack. Here's the stack. I want to be able to show them, like I did a few times, that I have a stack of messages from people that are expressing their opinions in support of the president and his policies. And then I'll send you, I'll send you the Insurrection Act. I'll send you that information to equip you to respond to those who are criticizing you, who are telling you that it's never happened before. Okay, I am exhausted, but it is what it is. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night here in Rogers for America. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, establishing a watch party somewhere between 7.30 and 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, tell your, uh, share with your friends that they could uh, tune into that watch party. If they miss it, the video is going to be up on Facebook. We're going to try to get it up on Twitter and other social media uh, platforms. I thank you so much for tuning in. And always, uh, through all the things I say and all the things we ask you to do, we never forget to ask you to pray. We never, never forget to ask you to remember there's a God above. And he loves us all. He's got the shadow of his wings over you, and he's got his shadow of the wings over our country. And I hope and pray that at the end of my day, at the end of the road that I walk in this life, and that you hope the same thing at the end of the road, at, at the last mile do you walk in this life, that you'll be able to say you did the best you could for your country, for your children. And you did your best to deliver a message that our purpose in life is to love and to glorify God forever. Thank you so much. See you at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night here on Twix TV, Rogers for America.